Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Pastor, today I wanted to ask uh, regarding the importance of God's Word and, and applying it to our lives. You know, in Acts chapter 12, we were just talking a few minutes ago, uh, it says that at Paul and uh, Saul and Barnabas had fulfilled their ministry, and it said that they brought John Mark with them. And then in the next chapter, it talks about that John Mark departs and returns from Jerusalem. Ultimately, it led to a sharp division between Paul or Saul and, and Barnabas. Reasons not given why he departed. Uh, but I wanted to ask, what is the importance of God's word being taught from the pulpit and, a, and us as we receiving it, that we're able to apply it in our lives to keep us from deserting from what God has called us yeah, to Yeah, one of the things that I think is wise is to be aware of the spiritual maturity of those that you place in positions of spiritual authority. You know, um, John Mark was obviously not spiritually mature enough to endure the hardships of missionary travel with Paul and his cousin Barnabas. And so you know, he initially seems to have um, been of help to them at the beginning but at a certain point, when uh, things got rough, apparently, he departed. He left and returned home. And so um, later on, when Paul wants to go and do some more ministry, and Barnabas, he had been traveling together as ministers, Barnabas wanted to bring Mark again, and Paul said no, no. And it speaks of the fact that he had... John had depart. John Mark had departed from them, and the word "depart" it's a it's a strong word. It, it really is a um, it's a, a departure that was um, an abandoning or a desertion, and so Paul did not want to bring him, and Barnabas wanted to, and the the division was so great that they separated, and you don't see Paul and Barnabas working together again in scripture, and Barnabas actually fades into the background and Paul takes the ascendancy. So as it relates to ministry and John Mark, why, why did he depart is not said. It doesn't say he deserted them for any, any specific reason, just that he did. So speculation is that maybe the ministry was just too tough for him. Maybe he simply missed his home and his family. Um, it doesn't say. It just says that he abandoned, he deserted, he left. So when it comes to the ministry of the word and missions and, and things of that nature, that really speaks to me more as a minister to be more aware of who I lay hands on and what qualifications they may possess. And especially as I pursue them serving alongside of us, uh, whether or not they have the, the maturity to be able to endure what ministry actually is. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, there's a romantic, a romantic kind of view, John, I think of pastoral ministry that people don't understand. They think that say, um, teaching a Bible study is easy and, you know, talking to people after service is, is you know, not that difficult. And they have no real clue because 99 percent of the people who are in the church service, at least in our fellowship, you know, depart immediately after the service. And so there's not a lot of face-to-face -face afterwards and conversation and how does this apply kind of things taking place. And, and so for many, they think, well, all that guy did is he stood up there and talked and then he goes in the back and drinks a cup of coffee. That's how a lot of people think. When in fact, ministry is, is as labor, the scripture refers to it, and your labor of love, it, it, it speaks of the work of the ministry because it is, it's, it's long hours and, and it's physically fatiguing. And sometimes there are dangers and challenges. And so in the case of John Mark, as he's out there in the field and he's seen the different responses to the ministry and, and some of the dangers that Paul and his team would encounter, he just wasn't ready for it. And so in the teaching of the word, you, you are attempting to encourage people to do what God says to do, but you have to take into consideration that very often 
they are not aware of what a cost actually it is. And so that's what takes place. And so with John Mark, he was, he was introduced to it. Um, he abandoned it. It wasn't ready for it. But later on, um, you see that, that Mark is the one who actually was used by the Lord to, uh, to write the gospel of Mark. And, and the last time Paul speaks of him is in Second Timothy chapter 4, and he speaks of uh, Mark being very profitable to him. So it's quite obvious that along the way, uh, Mark and uh, the Apostle Paul reconciled whatever differences they may have had and that's why Paul could say he's of great profit to me. He <clears throat> matured. Sounds he like grew he, up. So then, when you look at that and you can and you compare it with somebody like it says, "And Demas has forsaken me." Yeah. Is there a, any type of correlation? Is that a whole different thing? It's basically a different thing because um, Paul said, "Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present age." You know, whereas Mark is just not ready mm. for for ministry. And so what Demas did is he he completely forsook the apostle Paul, left him left him hanging, holding the bag is really the literal translation of the word forsaken. He's left me holding the bag. You know, everybody in Asia has departed and now you have Demas doing the same thing. And Demas was a traveling companion and minister to Paul. And Demas had seen Paul in prison. And it would seem to me on the, on, in the case of Demas that all he could see when he looked at Paul was some old lonely man shivering in a cell, wishing he had some parchments and, and, and um, things of that nature, some small, small things that would bring him comfort. When in fact, he loved this present age. He had the opportunity of seeing some of the, some of the cities and, be around some of the people who gave great honor to men like Paul and others, and and that enticed him. So he didn't have a, a heart for the, the coming age where we would be with the Lord Jesus and, and enjoying the fruits of our labors for eternity because he loved the present age that he was existing in. And so he departed, and uh, when he did so, he went to another city and remained there, probably taking advantage of some of the church members right. in, in the city and all. So he, he completely forsook Paul. We don't know because Second Timothy is where you find him in chapter 4 also. Because we don't know if he ever was recovered. We don't know if Demas ever realized what he had done and, and repented. We don't know. So his epitaph will always simply be, Demas has forsaken mm -hmm. me and departed. And what's interesting is you're, we've pointed out, we you've talked about two different people in two different phases with two different, I don't want to say motives. Maybe John Mark was just immature and not immature. ready. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, you see somebody who was in ministry for gain. Yeah. And, and, uh, and you can still see that today. I've seen that many times, John. I've been in ministry now for 48 years. I've been pastoring this church for over 40 and uh, yes, I've seen that uh, enough times to say that it's not an uncommon thing where somebody gets involved and loves this present age and, you know, and commits some sin, you know, adultery, stealing from the church or you name it. And, uh, and I've seen that, I've seen that more than once. And I have a lot of friends who've, who've experienced the same thing because because of this present age has such a powerful draw on people. And frankly, ministry is, is not as easy as people think it is, you know. It, it, you have to be called. I, I remember one of the brothers in our fellowship approaching me, and he was on staff at that time, and he said to me, um, I feel called by God to plant a church. And, and I remember I was seated behind my desk, and, and I, I teared up. When he said that to me, and I said, you don't know what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you're asking for. And he looked at me with some surprise. Like, How could you say that? And I, I said, what you're asking for is a lot different than what you're thinking it is. Over 20 years later, the same brother who had left planted a church and was involved in full-time service as the pastor. 
He said, you remember when you said that to me? And I said, yeah, of course. He says, I didn't know what you were talking about then. And I do now. Wow. So ministry is not what people think it is. And so with um, men like John Mark, John Mark was young. He had much to learn. He departed, you know, abandoned, not the faith, but just abandoned the mission for a while. But obviously was retrieved. He was recovered because his cousin Barnabas, uh, the word Barnabas speaks of the comforter or a comforter. And he was the one who had actually ministered to Paul when Paul was first saved. Yes. He's the one who took Paul and introduced him to the apostles and the people so afraid of this man <laughs> who was breathing out threatenings. And now he's saying he's one of us. He's the one who we need a Barnabas. And I believe that Barnabas had his ministry with his cousin, John Mark, and recovered him. And Paul was a man who, we got to get this done. And I can't, I, I cannot take the time to train up some novice in, in ministry that requires mature men. So the, the split was so severe that Paul took Silas and went on his ministry. Barnabas took John Mark and went in, in another direction. But at the end, and God always works these things out for good to those who love him. In the end, Mark was recovered. And I cannot help but believe that Barnabas' loving ministry to his cousin encouraged him to grow. Even as he had done with Paul, he encouraged him in his um, early walk and in his later walk with Mark. And that's why Paul can say at the very end, when he's saying in the same passage, Demas has forsaken me, he says that Mark is profitable mm. to me. Wow. Mm -hmm. Two different men at two different spectrums of the ministry. Yeah. And I can imagine like John Mark, how he felt afterwards. Mm -hmm. Will I ever be restored? Will I ever be used again? Yeah. And not that he fell, but in terms of that, in that where Paul was like, I don't, I don't need him. Mm -hmm. But to see that God still used him. God does. He well, has a way of doing that. Thank you, Pastor. That was uh, something I was thinking about. And, and I hope you guys find that this was interesting. And the, the importance of God's word being taught from the pulpits that we're able to apply it in our own lives and to fulfill the calling that God has given us. So important. You not only hear it, but you do it. Right. You know, it, it, that is the key, John. It's not the hearing. It's the hearing and applying. Because the way that real real um, maturity takes place, real understanding takes place, is not in becoming an encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. it, it comes in being imprinted and being a living letter. Wow. So it starts here and then it goes there. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in. And, and uh, we want to invite you to come to our services at 8.30 a.m. on Sunday and 10.45 a.m. Uh, Pastor, you're taking us through... The Gospel of Mark. We're looking at the feeding of the five thousand. Oh, that's going to be a good one. Yeah, because you like it. Because I love food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that the pozole and all that will multiply. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <Sure. laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. Pastor David, thank you guys so much. God bless you, and we'll see you on Sunday.